Let's create a formula to add some charts to the grid and color them red, of course. If you're interested in how this works, grab all the cooking ingredients you can find and let's break down this workbook. Thanks for watching. As always, you can go to the website to download this workbook and many other workbooks, all with source code. After you install the add-in, you'll see an add-ins tab on the ribbon. You'll be able to click font bar there. And if you have a selection of numbers there, you'll see that this dialog appears and you can start choosing the type of a bar you want to show. And there's some preset options here. So, and some of them are glyphs. In this case, I can use uh, this line, thin line. You can adjust the bar length and that'll just grow and shrink them relative to, to each other. Or you can turn on the value as well and that'll actually show the number value at the at the end. And I'll show you how to customize all this a little bit later in the video, but it does just insert a formula and so as the numbers change, you'd be able to see the bars update as well. And these are just strings in the cell, so you can apply font formatting to it, or we can do something interesting like uh, conditional formatting. And so if we go to CF and create a new formula rule, we can point it to the total value there. And then if it's greater than a certain number, let's say, so let's say greater than 5,000, then we can set the format to red and maybe we'll also make it uh, bold. And to get this to work properly, be sure you're setting the font properties and not like a, a fill or something because uh, the bars are treated as uh, text in the cell. And as you can see, some of the lines are red now and all of those are values over greater than 5,000. So that's uh, awesome. Let's just create a selection and turn some of them blue. And this is the other sort of manual way to, to do it. And you can see that you got uh, blue lines there now too. And let's add another set of bars to the price numbers. I'll show you how to customize these in a different way. And so you can see we inserted some boxes here, but since these are formulas, we can just edit the formula directly. And so in the far left of the formula, that little thing there is representing the box. So if we do something in Windows or we hit Windows semicolon, it'll pop up the emoji picker. We can pick say a money bag for that. That gets inserted into the formula bar. We hit enter and then now we've got uh, money bags repeating down the side. And the reason the formula filled down is because we're in a table. So when you change one common formula in a table, it auto fills down. And these are just treated as text again, so you can go and pick a different text color for these money bags, and those will be green. And because it's text in a cell, it can work in a lot of places where data bars don't today. So in the filter dropdown, you can see the different money bags, and if you wanted to pick the ones that were five and four, you could filter for those. You could also just hit sort as well, and that would sort the money bags from lowest to highest, or uh, descending for highest to lowest. You could also pull this data, uh, pull that column into a pivot table, and use it on the column or row to help help uh, group your, your fields there. Since the add-in just inserts a formula, let's break down how it works. On the breakdown sheet, you can see there's a bunch of random numbers that recalc. Uh, we calculate the min and we calculate the max, and then we figure out the bucket size uh, between that. So say I want five buckets. And so the length would be five, we'd divide and we'd figured out the bucket size there of 192.8. Then you figure out how many times each number goes into the bucket to calculate its bar and how many bars it gets. The nice part about the barcode is if you, it's just a repeat function. So if you do repeat of uh, any character and number of times, so in this case it's a five, so it's going to show five of those bars and that's how you build the chart. The form is a pretty standard form if you've used uh, VBA user forms before. The interesting part there might be the option group where I have a little bit of preset options and I do have some placeholders for like the range. The way I get the code to insert the formulas is to have the formulas already written there with a couple of placeholders for the references. And then in the create function, I just use those and I call the replace function and replace the placeholders with the actual cell addresses when the user uh, launches the, the feature. And using a token or a placeholder and then using the replace function with it is a nice trick to use uh, across a lot of different add-in scenarios. To get the button in the add-in tab, I just use some old command bar code here where I actually add a control to command bars that existed in 2003. The way the ribbon treats that now is by creating an add-in tab with that button in it. Easy way to get a button in the ribbon without having to mess with Ribbon X. And with that, we're all done. So thank you for making it this far in the video. You can download the workbook and the code from the website. I'll see you in the next one.